hi everyone and welcome back welcome to another video of uber eats clone and here we are uh, looking to build an admin a admin dashboard app in the next js and when i saw that they have released the latest version 13 which is in the beta version but we but what we are going to do is we will use the latest version to build our future apps because this is going to be stable in couple of months and then people will start using it if you go to the default documentation they will show you the documents of uh, version 12 but now we can actually go to a stable release documents okay i mean it's in the beta version stable release is v12 and we are looking into the v13 documents and when i saw the, the documentation i was impressed it's really nicely written so even if we go through a couple of uh, these docs we should be able to understand all those con concepts which we have done in the Swell kit like how we do the right routing the page based routing and the api routing and how we are handling the data at the server how we are handling or fetching the data at the client side and how we are deploying these are the common concepts of any server side rendered framework like Swell kit next js or next js all are like doing the same thing in their own different ways using their own framework it is using react so first of all installation and getting started very easy you can just use experimental app when you do it you will start using the the latest version where the they they started introducing the app directory right so if i talk about a simple structure uh you will see when you enable the experimental flag because currently it's in the beta version you will see this next app config with the app directory true and now the routing in the next js what are the major changes when you see in the next 13 what they have changed they have changed this folder based routing which i have seen in the swell kit also in the now you are creating folder inside folder you are creating plus page dot swell i think plus page dot server dot ts plus page dot server dot js something like this and when you come and see the next years you find some similarity here also you have a folder based directory structure in the version 13 there you inside that you are creating a layout.tsx page.tsx inside a directory uh, and then directory become a route let's say this is the app app contains a layout and page so when you hit a forward slash it is going to render this page with this layout right so i will just zoom zoom in a little bit this is nicely written first of all i will say this is the root layout because inside app you put a layout.tsx so whatever you are going to put inside an app directory is going to adopt this layout until unless you don't override it by defining the sub routes layout sub directory as its own layout okay uh, npm run dev all the things are seen even we have already created a baseline of our application i guess yes this is using if we go into package.json it is this is using uh next 13. okay so what we are going to do here is if we go into the app directory because here we are using a folder based directory and you can see inside a login it is using this directory based structure so login will have uh, its own layout.tsx and page.tsx and similarly the register will have its own if you want to have a root layout you can put outside so when you are hitting a forward slash it is going to use this page.tsx with this layout and when you go to the login route then it will it is going to use this folder folders layout because there is a layout created for the login page and this page.tsx is the component for it and next config and you can see experimental app directory is true what is uh, con we will introduce the tailwind post css and all because obviously we are not going to write a we will be using tailwind utilities to build our ui components that is true or even for the swell kit or for next js so this is how we are going to create a folder structure uh, in, in the login further you can create another folder and then that will further has its own .tsx and .tsx layout if you want to have its own layout otherwise this layout will be inherited whatever is being used inside it so this is the root layout of the whole application this will be inherited in the whole app directory then you define the, the sub layouts like this 
and you can also even create a folder where you want to discard all the root level layouts that also is possible but this is like a basic folder structure now app directory is introduced uh, which is really important in the pages you can still use for the apis in app directory you will create a folder and those folder will become the routes api routes like uh, how we are defining the routes here let's say i want to have a routes like this dashboard and settings i will create a dashboard directory in, in the inside app and then settings directory inside a dashboard and then inside settings i can create a page dot uh, tsx or page dot cs that depends on what you are writing if i'm writing a dot a ty typescript i'm using then it will become tsx so page dot js and page dot js so for set settings route this page dot js will play for dashboard this page dot js is the component for the root this page dot js is the component right now you will start creating the components you can start creating the pages like this export default function my component and it's all react you are writing you can also create a groups this concept was there i think in the svelte kit also we were creating the group layout let's say i don't want uh, to have a marketing as the ap the url inside the url then we can group like the about and the blog will use this same root layout which is defined inside a layout right so uh, when you hit a above forward slash about it will check because marketing is not a part of url it will say okay this is the about it will render the page so here using this you can create a grouping like uh, auth, auth layout and uh, or public layouts auth layout or admin layout where you need to have a login first or the public layout means you can group all those layouts or the pages which are public to the user without login they can access it so you can just put them inside a brackets and just group all of them okay you can have a specific layout also like uh, for the account here we are using this specific layout.js right for the card it will just use this root layout you can create a multiple root layout for anything which is coming inside a marketing will use this layout.js anything which is coming in shadas shop will use this layout but these are at the root level first of all because marketing and the shop really is not a part of the path okay this is very basic theoretical stuff and in a similar way we also create a dynamic uh, path like if you want to have a dynamic path then you will create a folder structure like this let's say i wanted to have like a post or let's say blog inside that i can create a plug and then i can further create a piece and the layout for the blog and the same i can copy and uh, paste inside a blog so what did i do so this is the blog and inside a slug also okay i um, mean in media i need to rebuild the finder so inside uh, there is a slug and there is a blog okay now this is correct earlier maybe it was not copying things you can see now it has its own page.tsx so forward slash blog will render the page.tsx and then for the dynamic part inside a blog it will use this page.tsx okay and uh, these are actually the params dynamic params which will be you can uh, get it slug value is a here if you are passing the route like this and slug value will be b catching all the segments if you want to pass anything then you can do a dot 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 slug this is also existing concept of next js and whatever you pass after this shop that will be passed as an array right here i'm passing a b so it will become a slug value is an array of a and b here i'm passing a b c slug value become an array of a b c okay so this is how we catch the params and we print it now pages and the layouts i'm, I'm looking into the documentation just to make you more okay uh, this is not something which you cannot 
you can also go through this link and start looking into this i love reading documents first before even getting into that i have already created a, a huge playlist on the next js which is using the earlier version this is the new version which is using the app directory structure so we'll just go through some of the the documentation so inside app it will use page.js dashboard will use this page.js okay so you might be writing a dot js dot psx dot gsx all these kind of extension you will can use it can be page.js page.tsx or page.gsx layouts layouts are important right and when i'm putting the layout in the dashboard this layout will be used by settings also because this is the root layout of the dashboard okay we already know how we are doing the grouping and all this is root layout nesting of the layouts here in the forward slash app there is a root layout and then when you go to the dashboard there is a another layout being used okay so this is the dashboard layout and maybe we'll have a one root layout okay so these are the two different layouts but these are nested layouts app layout is okay this replacing the whole body and then the dashboard layout is replacing just a right hand segment of the the whole body page okay so this is how the dashboard looks like and you can also create a templates templates are I'm not familiar template is similar to the layout in the way it wrap each child layout or page unlike the layout so we will see in the example like how we are creating templates and all template is a really new co concept you can also modify the head title and metadata of a particular page for seo because what you want to have is because in next case js is server side rendered and you want to have a seo search engine optimization for each and every route you are creating so you maybe want to update a head title properties and all these are like a metadata property which you can update in any page.tsx or page.js something like this generate metadata and you just change the title there so generate metadata is actually already uh, next js will look for calculating the metadata for this particular page and when it sees the title it will replace the title in the title for the page which is server side rendered linking navigation is all about how you link the routes like how we are navigating from one page to another page and how we can put a link in the html in the react component so there is a next link already there when you click on to this it will take you to the dashboard route uh, because we use it uh, every other place to to navigate to a sub route to navigate to another parent route and all like this so here it is it will navigate you to the blog forward slash the slug of the blog and if you want to navigate dynamically from navigate programmatically then you can use use router it's provide a hook and then you can just do router dot push that is when you are doing something inside a code if you are doing something inside a template you can use link uh, component inside the uh, inside the component react uh, react code you can use a router dot push uh, how the navigation works i mean it, uh, it actually is a transition from one page to another page it's like a whole reloading is happening to that particular page okay now another important part i want to talk about i mean you can go and uh, look into the this, this documentation link api reference and use router and loading the ui i think yeah i have already covered this yes you can use this uh, this is the nice concept of react uh, sorry next year's 13 is they provided this suspense api to load a particular child component inside a body right so you can wrap that component inside a suspense suspense will do is okay if the component is loaded that's fine otherwise it will show you the loading state right so in the same folder loading.js will be nested inside a layout.js so here you can actually create a loading.tsx and you can create a skeleton layer you can create a, some kind of a skeleton and that skeleton will be shown until your component is getting loaded so inside this page component i created a suspense and fall back to the loading component so you might have seen on a lot of uh, applications you see the loading skeleton running from left to right before the page content really appears right uh, i mean we are going to use this loading which is really a nice concept of uh, 
next js 13 you can see here we created explicitly loading dot ts ts or tsx inside a particular route so here before even you load the page data or something then this loading dot uh, ts can do a lot of things okay error handling is how we create an error dot js page so whenever any error occurred it will look for the nearest error boundary right error dot js error dot tsx and you can show some messages or you can just render some components something went wrong something like this so i created an error dot ts error dot tsx page and i created an error boundary this error boundary you can wrap inside a root layout and whenever something goes wrong it will fall back to this error component and it will show you this uh, okay you need to retry there is a button click it will take you to the home page or something this is also really another nice concept of next 13 you can create error dot gs tsx like loading dot gs or tsx page it's like a react error boundary and right? whenever the error occurred it will look for the nearest error page error component and then uh, you can use this and how you can recover from the errors you can either reload the page or navigate to another component or something like this okay so here you can see we are creating error boundaries so if anything goes wrong inside this page it will go to this error boundary and if anything goes wrong outside this it will look for the nearest outside error boundary so error bubbles up from the nearest parent this is like a bubble up bubbling up from the the bottom most to the top most error.js boundary will not handle errors thrown in the layout.js component okay interesting read okay something went wrong this is like a global error boundary you have created inside an app so anything if you have not created any child level error boundaries then all will be captured at the global error boundary when I mean, there are a lot of new things to understand and read i guess so we can stop here how many things are here okay then uh, so let's let's not talk about these things let's do this in the real example real demo example then you will understand another major important concepts we will talk about is how we are fetching the data fetching the data at the server side fetching the data at the client side or building the the static path uh, from the, the static path from the server side those are the real important concept how we are doing the data fetching because that is important everywhere either you do the swell kit next year so next year how you do the data fetch at the server side using get server side props i guess server side data rendering and uh, client side data rendering all those concepts are important so let's see that in the real demo examples because it's uh, next year's 13 a lot of new things are in being introduced and it is in beta version but i'm going to use it uh, this is really a lot of things are really new and worth exploring so we will do a hands-on and explore all these concepts one by one